The only Dawson refuses to be categorized the podcast. Uh, today I want to talk about kind of frugality and self care, and should I be more frugal with my self care? So I just wanted to moodle something with you that I've been thinking of. And first, before we get into it, I just want to acknowledge my numerous privileges when it comes to life and money. I am a white woman living in a developed and stolen country. I had the privilege of a stable home, parents who could afford food and invest in education. I also have the privilege of appearing size at and having disabilities that are invisible. So my privileges really are bountiful and unearned and I need to acknowledge that before I go further into this discussion. So now I'm going to talk about frugality because I have been on an obsessive binge with a blog called Frugal Woods. They're like an excellent personal finance blog and they also have a book as well called Meet the Frugal Woods. And I think they're brilliant and deeply inspiring and they also practice a kind of like extreme frugality and manage to save up to 82% of their income and because I'm a competitive motherfucker (laughs) I immediately start thinking like oh I need to do more I shouldn't be spending so much money I wonder if I should practice extreme frugality too and you'll know if you've taken my money manifesting my money manifesting a multiple streams of income program. You'll know that I'm already a conservative spender and despite being a multimillionaire or perhaps that's what's caused it, I still have a budget and I still save probably more than half our income. And once I like actually calculate it, I realized it was like closer to 75% of it once I count in all of our company dividends and stuff like that. But still, I was thinking maybe I should up it, maybe I should do more. and. After thinking about it, I've realized like I don't think extreme frugality is the best financial decision for me and here's why. So the income of most business owners depends on the energy levels of the owner. The healthier the owner is, the more they're able to make good strategic decisions and create better work. And their income can greatly increase when they're doing awesomely and their income can also potentially falter if their health falls, fails too, depending on how they've set up their income streams and business systems. And The cost of self-care and ensuring that good health is usually much smaller than the potential earning power. It's usually like a really good return on investment. So an extreme example, when I had hyperemesis gravidarum in my second pregnancy, I was horrifically and chronically ill and required a lot of emergency room visits in order to be able to just fucking survive, you know, and my organs not to shut down and shit like that, and for me not to be dehydrated and malnourished. So I could barely function, and I was looking at nine months of this unrelenting shit show. In the early months, however, acupuncture definitely helped me by giving me a few hours of manageable relief on the day that I had it. So I ended up paying for daily acupuncture, And it helped me to be able to work for a little bit. And it was a worthy expense, like $50 a day to be able to get about $3,000 of work done each day. Plus like 50 bucks was worthwhile just to be able to connect with my family for a bit and take a breath of air before I was submerged again. Another somewhat extreme example, last year I dislocated both hips and prolapsed a disc from walking. Yes, fucking walking. I am hypermobile, so my limbs dislocate way too easily. Anyways, it took about it took about oh, five months or so to recover from it. And in the meantime, I was doing osteopathy for like every three days for a while. And again, it was a good invest- investment because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to function or work because I was in too much pain. And now for some non-extreme examples because my body isn't always super extreme. (laughs) What I know is whatever I can do to keep myself functioning physically, mentally and emotionally, it's a really good investment. So my average rate of income per workday is about $5,000 and it can be even more if I'm feeling clear and energized and productive and it can be less if I'm out of commission. It's not highly susceptible however because I've got 
good business systems and support in place. So my income can potential can increase kind of exponentially if I'm in good nick. So anything that can fix or prevent injury and pain is a good investment for me. So it's just not worth being frugal for it. So that includes massage and osteopathy, acupuncture, reflexology, and any other body work. What's more, anything that keeps me functioning well and improving my health is also a good investment. So some good healthy investments for me is buying my favorite $10 smoothie every day, stocking up at the health food store. I just went there actually and spent mm, $130 on um, these like ridiculously amazing chicken broth crisps. And yes, I know I sound like an, an enormous hipster when I say that. And um, this fucking freeze-dried keto ice cream thing. I don't know. It tastes like space food and it's kind of addictive and delicious. And it's got collagen in it, which is apparently good. I don't know. I got it from a, the, the company is called Noosa Cookhouse, if you wanted to check that shit out if you're in Australia. But the chicken broth crisps are like... <laughs> out of this world. Anyway, uh, also a good investment for me to bulk order my favorite snacks and it's a good investment for me to invest in therapy and coaching when I need it. And yes, I absolutely realize I am enormously privileged to be able to do it. And again, like even though I pay for like I'm happy to invest in all of those things, I already do save 75% of my income. I'm not a spender. I don't have any debt. I already have a budget and I used to live paycheck to paycheck with maxed out credit cards and I changed all my money habits about 15 years ago as I talk about in Money Manifesting and Multiple Streams of Income and that's still one of the best things I've ever done. So I know that when I talk about good investments, I know I can actually afford them to begin with and I'm not going to go into credit card debt. So I feel like I need to say that. There's definitely things that I can be more frugal with that's not going to imp impact my income, however. So I think I can cut out most online shopping as evidenced by my last 21 day challenge I did. Uh, I can cut out most clothes shopping now because I'm pretty well stocked, really. I don't need anything more. And I think, oh my God, I can stop buying shit tons of graphic novels because my eldest kid is starting to move on to other novels, which are easier to source. Um, but of course, if she wants to read more, I will happily invest in that because investing in my kids' education and reading and that kind of stuff is one of my central values. Now, you might be saying like, well, what should you do with your money is extreme frugality the right path for you and how much should you spend on self-care and i want to be honest and i also want to be a little bit like lazy here because that's up for you to answer <laughs> i can't think about like a million different situations because i can only think about my own so what i would recommend doing is moodle it around and see what's right for you and your specific situation what's going to give you a really good return on investment um, and what's going to enable you to be you know more free to do the thing that you want to do i hope this has been helpful and i think i might treat myself to another round of my expenses challenge as well which is in the first activity in the money manifesting a multiple streams of income program we as a family do it every year anyway and I reckon we bonds to go through. Maybe I should even do it publicly and maybe share the results with you. What do you think? Let me know. Email me, support at com. Tell me, tell me. Uh, and of course, I would be remiss to not remind you that there is like 16 days left to get my three most po popular programs uh, before they double in price. So there's money manifesting and multiple streams of income, 40 days to a finished book and 40 days to create and sell your e-course. And each one has had thousands and thousands of students go through them now with rave results with e-courses created and books uh, written and published and um, money saved and money earned and money situations far more under control which is just delicious if you want to know more go to leonidawson.com forward slash double and i hope you have a fucking miraculous day may you be whole may you be safe and may you be blessed <laughs>